Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be throwing a new series here away. What if Naruto and Hinata were captured and had their memories sealed away? Part 1 guys. If you want to see part 2 and you enjoy this just stick around guys and I'll be posting part 2 as soon as possible for you guys to enjoy. And also guys if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice. I have 3 channels. Yes, you heard that correctly, 3. Anime making, anime making, doing making 3. Which I post what if on every single day. Yes, it might sound crazy because sometimes it sounds crazy to me, but I indeed post what if on them every single day. So 3 what ifs every day for you guys to enjoy. Yes guys, 3. It's a lot, I know. So just place your foot up, sit back, and yeah, relax. Remember to turn on the bell notification so you can see exactly when I post. Because sometimes become a bit confusing with all the what if I'm letting out. So I really hope that you enjoy this one and yeah, without further ado, what is to begin this new episode, start the intro. Kanoha, October 10th, Hokage's office. Harrison Saratobi sat at his desk as he was reading. The damages report caused by the Kyube a few hours ago. Kanoha had lost the four Takagi, Minato Namikaze, and many young fine brave shinobis as well. It would take years for the Leaf Village to ever recover. There were too much questions but little answers surrounding the Kyube attack. What really happened during? The labor of Kushina Uzumaki, and what caused the fox to be released, and what happened to the Anvu security detail, his wife Bowako and Tachi, they were all murdered. Kushina labor was classified, and there was only a select few that knew it. The entire information he had did not add up, and certain things were missing, but he had no one to get answers from, because no one that was there was alive anymore that could tell him the tale of what happened. He doesn't wish Minato could have told him what happened before. He dropped from Mabunta on top of the Nine Tails to stop another Tail Beast bomb. He then left and performed the Eight Trigram Seal on his son, the Seal of Kayube, as his wife held it down. Thinking about the cup of sun he got to his feet, there was a cradle next to his desk. The baby was fast asleep in his cradle. He would never forget the dying moments of a couple and their parting words to their son. As he reached in and picked up the child, I am so sorry Naruto you were just born a couple of hours ago and yet, you have to face this terrible burden, but I swore to your mother that I will protect you. There was a knock at his door, it was his secretary, Hokage Sama, the council is assembled, they are waiting for you. He doesn't release a sigh, he already knew that the tiresome civilian council members would be there, courtesy to Donzo Shimura, and he already knew what they want to talk about. After summoning Anvu, Anvu the dog mask to watch over the baby, he made his way towards the counter chambers. Time skip. The demon must be killed now. Juro Matsumaru, a civilian merchant, said he lost much of his properties and businesses due to the Kayubi attack. We must finish what the fort started. Fukaku Uchiha remained quiet as he watched the foolish members speak and speak their nonsense well. So did the other council members. The Uchiha's were ordered not to engage the fox by the village leadership. Some population however believed that the mighty Uchiha's had been cowered in fear due to the Kayubi attack that is why they didn't show up. Later on Fukaku learned that the idea was from none other than Donzo, that old decrepit bastard. He would have a talk with Hokage about this, not now but later. He didn't want the topic to digress any further. But his hatred could not quell that easily as his glare was on the old war hawk. Gonzo, he either noticed and pretend not to, or he did not, which was highly unlikely. Fukaku had been a good friend with Minato, and his wife Mikato was a good friend with Kushner, best friends if you might say, 
and she knew about the labor as well. Upon learning of her best friend's death, she had grieved. They were here one moment, next they were now gone. It was rather messed up how things could change so easily. Hayashi was also Minato's good friend as well. And his twin brother Hisashi was the fourth Akagi's best friend. The Haiwa clan Ed also knew about Kushina's secret and her royal lineage. His wife he told me was also a best friend of Kushina. But there was a Maki had a slighter bitter relationship with the Hayuga matriarch due to the Haiwa clan political connections. Because Kushina was a secret princess of the land of whirlpools. The land of whirlpools were later on integrated with the Fire Country. As a province, when the country fell in the Second Shinobi War, Kushina had tremendous political power in fire politics as the whirlpool riches and resource contributed to the Fire Country tremendously. Not to mention the whirlpool province was a strategic trading and transporting hub. Hayashi couldn't help but feel saddened that they died sealing Kayubi and now their son was left without parents. He was now the third Uzumaki to have the beast seal inside of him. He told me he was devastated as he had to comfort her for their unborn daughter before he came to this meeting. The doors opened up as everyone got to their feet to greet their military leader as Hiruzen went and sat in his seat to address the people in here. We suffered enough today. As you already know Minato died, sealing the beast into a child. No, that baby is a weakened version of the Kayube. The whole civilian side erupted. After all they lost, they were putting their hate not on the fox but they were seeing the baby as a fox. Look at his face one of them said. Those whisker marks, he is the fox. Silence, Hears and shouted. Don't you ever interrupt your Hokage again, he said. The look on the man's face promised that they wouldn't like it. Their mouths shut so fast. Minato sealed the cube inside the boy. And it was his last request that the child be seen as a hero. As Hiruzen paused, the civilian side erupted. They couldn't believe that the fort would actually want the child alive. To believe that the child was to be viewed as a hero after all that he's done despite him and the fox not being connected to these people. As the clan council members looked towards them, they have really lost their mind. How stupid can they be? Drew on the other hand, with the amount of business that he lost, he was furious. His fist came down and hit the table. Kill the beast before it can finish what it did. A woman on the council, known as Haruna, her last name, spoke up as she agreed. Yes, that thing took the Hokage away from us. Like many, she had a large crush on the fourth Hokage. But unlike most, she was trying to get to the fame and fortune that he carried after leaving up the name of well the fort of Kage and the yellow flash believing that she was entitled to such a life and now all of that was taken away as she looked towards the problem of all of that that demented child I have a better idea everyone quieted down as a bandage man spoke up let me have the boy I'll personally train him to be Kanoha's best weapon to ensure the village supremacy over the world. The destruction that Hoshirama and Madara caused and the Valley of the End could not gauge a beast's power because those two men were powerful themselves. Thus, tonight it was shown that the beast was tremendously powerful, far superior to the Eight Hills, which people had feared despite power because the Nine Tail has never been truly released in that magnitude before, but tonight people had witnessed its power and they saw just how much stronger the beast was. Donzo hears and said angrily, What? Giving him power? Are you insane? Kill the monster immediately! The civil inside shouted you once again. Hears and lost it. Hearing these accusations, hearing these claims, to kill an innocent child just because you didn't understand, just because you wouldn't take a second to understand, he lost himself as he slipped. His killer intent came out like a tidal wave, his fist smashing the table as he cracked. Enough! You people want to kill the child of Minato and Kushina that is holding back the beast, that is sacrifice to hold back the beast. You want to kill the child so the beast can be released? He said in rage. Hearing that, everyone went quiet. 
You could literally hear a pin if it had dropped because the people were so quiet. The major clan heads that had their suspicion remained quiet. The Hokage just confirmed it. It all made sense in the end. How could Minato ask any parents of their child if he could not do the same? He was a Hokage after all a great leader who lead with examples. On the other hand, most of the clan heads had their babies born this year. They shivered the thought of Minato akin to them. For their child to become a human sacrifice, the civilians never thought once about the parents of this demon child. Up until now, they didn't really care. Many of them pale just thinking about the betrayal they will be doing to the Fort Takagi just by killing said child. But others shudder in fear thinking about the beasts being released once again. Harrison was cursing himself in his mind. Shit, shit, shit. What have I done? There will be severe ramifications if neutral lineage, when it spread, damn it. The Hidden Stone and several other enemies. A lot of people hated Minato. Wow, great power. Yes, that also leave many people in the dust with hate that fester and fester for years. He cannot put Naruto in the orphanage, otherwise he will be exposed to his parents' enemies. And he would not trust Donzo and definitely not the civilian members. Now knowing that the child belonged to such a background, they would try to use him. Yes, it's true. Kushina Uzumaki was pregnant with Minato's child. After the war they marry and went to the hidden snow for their honeymoon. If you want more witnesses, they went with Hitomi and Hayashi. Hayashi stood to his feet and spoke indeed. They and Hitomi and I went to the snow country together. Minato thought it would be more fun to have company. It brought a fond memory to Hayashi. When Kushina had literally made a joke about him using his biak gun, look in their room, like if he would do something like that. But still, it rather amused him, as he found it rather funny. Yes, he had his moments. No, that can't be true, Sakuri Haruno said. As she remembered the red-headed, tomboy, tomato, of all the girls, why her? Everyone knew that she hated the redhead for some reason, but no one knew why. You people speak your mouth, but you do not understand Fujutsu. Tell me, do any of you believe that you're a better Fujutsu master than the Fort Okage? Have you had such little faith in him to believe that he will leave this village in peril after risking his own life? And thinking of the child as a Kyuubi in human form, when there is a perfectly well-rounded seal on his stomach that keep the Kyuubi at bay. You all should be ashamed of yourself. Haishi said as he looked towards them, his stern glare making them flinch. It was one thing for them to talk their mind, but for them actually want to go through with this. But it was something he would never allow, even if he had to put each and every one of them down. The other clan heads looked towards the man. Usually he didn't show this much emotion, but he was a close friend to the Fort Okage, and seeing his child be mistreated like this, well, it shouldn't be a surprise. Harrison spoke afterwards. We urgently need Jerry of the Sony Spy Network more than ever now. He was appointed the godfather of Naruto, but he cannot take him on. The world need to know that Kanoha is still strong after Kyuubi attack, and Jerry is the best man for the job. The last thing we want right now is for another nation to try and take advantage of us, thinking that we're weakened. And for his protection and well being, Naruto Namikaze will be living in a clan. Why a clan? Why not a civilian foster family? Sakuri asks. She still had the ambition to get power and wealth, despite her Fort Okagi was now gone. Minato Boy was at the same age with her niece, her niece Sakura Haruno. She can manipulate things to make the two get together. The fortune, the power, the prestige. It will be mine, she thought to herself, as she was just lost enough the idea to have her name up there in the political standing. Shikaku Nara sighed in annoyance. Chobasam, do you think any civilian can handle a decent size Chonin threat? Besides, you were calling for his death. A few minutes ago and you were not willing to accept the fourth guy's wish. So do you really believe that anyone in here will really trust you? He asks. Then put the boy into my care, said Danzo. I can train him to protect himself against his father's enemies. How can I trust you when you invited the civilians into this ninja matter, Harrison said. Hokage-sama, please let me adopt Naruto. Minato is my friend. 
and the two men Kushner were best friends as well. I do not have a son but I will treat the child, like my own, said Hayashi. Fugaku got to his feet, Hokage-sama, allow me to take care of Naruto. My two sons will accept him, like a brother. Hiruzen paused as he started to think about the matter. He then spoke after a while. I have no doubt that Fukaku-san and Hayashi-san will take good care of Naruto but in long term I believe that Hayashi should be the one that take care of him. The Hayuga clan has more suitability to take care of him because of Kushina's royal status. She was a princess and ruler of the land of Whirlpool. Now Naruto is the heir of the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans and the land of Whirlpool. Hence, I would like Hayashi to teach a boy etiquette and politics when he grew up. He will need them when he dons these mantles and get his parents inheritance when he reaches 17 or become a chunin, whichever comes first. Fukaku frowned his wife would have been happy to look after her best friend's son but the Hokage reasons were logical and he could not argue against them. Although the Uchiha clans were a clan of elite ninjas, he had to admit those bastards were better in the feel and politics and manners. A civilian raised his hand. What is this Uzumaki clan? I've never heard of it. Me neither, another one said. He doesn't realize that they did not know. As he decided to tell him a bit about the right here clan. As they were the cousins of the Senjus. The members were shocked. Know that they thought about it, yes. The wife of the first was a Uzumaki. But many of them never bothered themselves with that. Some of them not even paying attention to Shinobi matters. But still, that was a lot to take in. When Sakuri overheard all of that, she was shocked. This boy had so much riding for him. He would definitely become in the spotlight in a few years. And she believed that she was entitled for this. It was just of manipulating things to get her way, which she will do. Time skip. Hokage's office. After watching Aigua clan, left with the baby root in his arms. Hiruzen looked up towards a photo on the wall. Sensei, I hope the slip of tongue is a blessing in disguise. Hiruzen said, as he looked to drink some steak, he would have some of it before resuming his duty, which he had a lot to do. But before he could, there was a knock. He already knew. Enter, he said, as he could tell who it was already. There was more than one. It was the three village elders. The meeting is already over. What else is there that you want to speak about? Harrison, you really need to reconsider about the boy. For the good of, Donzo was cut off. Do all of you forget what Mitosama said about being a Jinjulke to the Kayube? As he gave them a critical glance, you really forgotten, do you? To counter the Kayube hatred and prevent the seal from breaking, the Jinjulkes need to fill themselves with love. Your special training would one day backfire horribly. And my decision is final. Now leave. I have a lot to do. They had nothing to retort as they left. This is not over, Donzo thought. Time skip. Uchiha clan head house. Mikoto was pleased as she stood at the door. Itachi had watched over Sasuke during the Kayubi attack. And now they were fast asleep. I'm home. She quickly made her way towards the source. How was the meeting, darling? She said. Same as always, tiresome. Oh, there's some news. Kushina's son is now at Hayashi custody. Her eyes widened at that. I had tried to adopt him, but the third gave the custody to Hayashi due to Kushina's royal lineage. I am sorry, Mikato, I knew that you would have loved to look after him. It's alright, she said. As long as he's happy, and we can also always visit him. Don't stress yourself too much. Meanwhile, at the Hayuga head house, he told me his Ashi. And his Ashi's wife, Hannah, was holding her baby Neji. As they were waiting for Hayashi to return, they were surprised though. Brother, who is that baby? This is Naruto, the son of Minato and Kushina. His Ashi eyes went wide. This baby was his best friend's son. He told me he walked over. He's so cute. Just like neji -kun, she said. As she held out her arms, he handed the baby over towards her. As she held him lovingly. As she shed a tear, he reminded her so much of Kushina. As the child reached out and gripped onto her clothing, poking her pregnant belly in the process. Oh don't worry, she said. You will have a friend very soon, she said. 
I hope you guys can be very good friends, she said to him, as she smiled at the baby. The next day, the funerals for all those who perish. As Harrison was currently in mid-speech, but there's a hope he said for the future. The Fortikage has left us his legacy his son, Naruto, who he used to stop the Kayubi from rampaging. What? The revelation shocked many as Harrison's speech went on. Speaking about the boy's mother, people started gradually understand, but they were still in shock though. But some of them started to like the idea. The child can bring forward a new legacy and a brighter future. However, a few days after that, one of the elders were livid at the thought of Hayashi doing this without consoling with them first, inviting that child in the clan. He wanted to kill the child. Luckily, the nanny that was there screamed when she saw the man approaching the child and he was stopped before he could do anything. The man was sentenced to death for what he tried. Hayashi was proving a point that he would not stand for any of this. Hiruzen was livid as he placed Naruto there to be safe, not to be targeted as he begged Hiruzen for a second chance, which he allowed after a long talk. On December the 27th, a young girl was born from Hitomi. They named her Hinata. Baby Naruto was smiling when he saw her, as she was small and rather pretty. As Hayashi placed Naruto down into the crib to see what he would do, as he didn't try to move or anything, he just looked at her. The baby wristband that he had on his arm. As a child looked towards him, this spy just being born a few hours ago, she seemed to be quite happy and content here. Time skip. Three hours later, the Hayugas were a strict, cool people. Not that they hate their clan's member or anything, but it was just the routine of their clan practice. However, that child just brought a warmth that was never seen before. However, some people didn't appreciate it. Even outside the clan, there were several attempts, but they were all stopped before they could harm the child. The number gradually decreased. After they knew what would happen when they were caught, and trust me, they were always caught. At the moment, today was Naruto's third birthday party. Hi, JJ said Naruto, as he smiled up at the old man for coming to his party. There were many presents for Naruto. Even the branch members gave him presents anonymously. Jorah had also sent something as well, but he apologized that he could not come. But there was also the branch members who had a high respect for the child, reason being. Flashback, one month ago, Hinata was flanked by two main house members. In front of her was a trembling branch member. Her eyes were watery. Hinata Sam, this is easy. Just do this hand sign that we showed you. Elder Kagiai instructed. She she just accidentally bumped into me when she was doing the house cleaning. She already apologized, Hinata said. She don't deserve to be punished. You are the high grade heiress. You should put those low place branch members in their place. They must know that they serve the main house. Another elder named Nobori said in an arrogant tone. Hinata shook her head fiercely. No, I won't do it. It's not right, she said. I'm disappointed in you, Hinata-sama. For a main house member, you are weak to do the necessary task. Kagiai's voice was icy cold and the remark struck home. As Hinata's eyes start to water, Fine, I'll do this one on your behalf. You can thank me later, the other member said. Before they could though, they were struck with something brown. Staining in their clothing, as they turned to see Naruto standing there, with a mud ball in his left hand. Hey, don't bully them, said Naruto. Before he could pull his hand back and throw the next mud ball, the elders appear in front of him. You little brat, you ruin our silk kimonos. Do you know how expensive these are? Noboru slapped him across the cheek. As Kageai punched him in the stomach, caused Naruto to drop to the ground. I don't care if you're under the Hokage protection and Hayashis. We will be teaching respect. Naruto glanced over as he saw Hinata rushing towards him to stop them from doing what they were doing. And Noboru gave her a look. It was like he was going to do something. Naruto jumped and bit the man on his arm. The man screamed out. Before Naruto raised his legs and kicked him in the chest, there was a force behind it that was rather shocking. Given that he was so young, he then jumped and slashed at the other member. Kagea got to her feet, shocked when she saw the boy. 
It was then that the rest of the members start to arrive on the scene. As they had heard the scream, as Naruto was glaring daggers at both of them, his eyes were a bit crimson, not to mention his nails had elongated for a second there, slashing the woman. Little to say, the branch members had come to respect the child for what he did, and he not as well for standing up for them. In the flashback, Naruto was very happy though. With the family and the people that he had around him despite, the shortcomings, the Uchiha head was also at the party as well. As Fukaku was in the corner, his sons were here as well, Itachi and Sasuke as well. As he watched Naruto the child still, despite the life that he was in, there were still many that tried attempts on his life, and not to mention the whisperings of demon brats, but it was not only him, the Uchiha clan was being ostracized. Rumors and this that was going around, and they were trying to push his clan back. And he was not going to stand for it because the more time passed, the more angry he got. As he stood there in the corner, unknowingly to everyone, he activated Sharingan. As his eyes started to spin, time skip. Sakuri Haruno was rather disappointed. Her niece Sakura also attended the party, but she came home empty handed. She told her that Naruto was hanging out with the other boys of the clan. The other ears. The Nara, the Yakimichi, and the others. He even hang out with a creepy Abermi. Well, it's reasonable that a boy at his age would play with the other boys. She thought. However, the only girl that he seemed to be comfortable around was Hinata. And that was rather concerning. The kids will join the academy a few years later though. She can't allow Naruto to fall in love with a Hayuga. Otherwise, that would ruin all of her plans. Time skip. It was Hinata's birthday, but there was also an event that was taking place, which Hayashi had to take part in a bit. They were solving a massive conflict with Kumo, as they were going to sign a peace treaty. Most of the Kanopa villagers are on the street welcoming the Kumo ambassador that arrived to speak to them about the treaty. This was a good day. They could finally set aside some mindless conflicts. With a peace treaty sign and once they shook hands, the people erupted into cheers and applause. Harrison was happy that everything went well. No more life had to be wasted for the meaningless conflicts. However, as everyone was celebrating D that came from Kumo, noticed several people. One of them being Juro, Matsumaru, a great hater of Naruto, Sakuri Haruno, and some of the Hayuga elders. These people all had one thing in common, they hated Naruto. He gave them a smile. Something was up. Time skip midnight. Hayuga head house. Today was a very long day. We have finally come to some sense of peace, Hayashi said. He was happy. Everything went well. His daughter birthday went well as well. Knowing Naruto nature of staying up and always doing something. Sometime pulling some small pranks. He activated his Byakun to make sure he was asleep. But what he saw alarmed him. There was a man jumping through the window. His wife saw the look on his face. What's wrong? He flashed off with speeds, moving through the house. Stop right here, he said as he arrived. The man turned towards him. Hayashi thrust forward. The man tried to leap, but Hayashi was faster as he struck the man in the shoulder. The man had two sacks over his back. The man fell, luckily. The way he held the sacks, they did not hit the ground that hard, they just rolled with him. Hayashi had his Byakun activated before he could look toward the sacks, the man flashed through hand signs, dropping the sacks for a split second before he blasted off a lightning jutsu straight towards Hayashi's face. The lightning jutsu went up in a bright flash, alerting many more Hayugas that rushed towards the scene, but because of the light and the sensitivity, because of his eyes. Hayashi was struck with another jutsu right in his chest that left his body paralyzed. Said man grabbed the children and ran. Hayashi shouted out no as the man moved off. The Hayugas arrived soon after as Hayashi shouted for them to find him immediately. But something was wrong. The man just vanished. There was no way that he would know Kanoha better than them. Something was wrong. Time skip. A few hours later, Harrison was downright furious. His surrogate godson and the highway heiress had been kidnapped. 
The envoy arrived with the dog mass. Report. Nothing. It's like they vanished overnight. Even Pakon couldn't find their scent. The gray here envoy sadly shook his head. Minato Sensei. I'm so sorry I feel you. All tracking teams were dispatched, but they couldn't find any trail other than lightning dudes that hit Hayashi. The person just vanished like that. Hiruzen was furious. Who was responsible for this? The Kumu ambassador that just left for Lightning Country. After the treaty, Danzo or someone else. If Danzo was behind it then, he was a dead man before night's end. As Kano had just lost Naruto, not to mention him being the Jinjulke of the Nine Tails, if information like this was to circulate, he need. During Tsunade back here now, he knew that he would be chewed out a bit, but that didn't matter because the pain that he was feeling at losing that child after begging him to look after their children she begged him and he lost he lost a child minato kushina please forgive me he said time skip 10 days later kumo tower restricted basement room all the powerful weapons were stored here including the treasures of the Siege of Six Path. Only people with the highest clearance could gain access. But the room was not quiet because of B. If you don't want to feel my iron claw, I suggest you stop rapping right now. Despite being annoyed by his brother's rapping, the Fort Rai Kage couldn't be much happier as he looked towards his ninja with the two children. The rapping from B though was just to hide this inner conflict. That child was the son of Minato. Minato had seen them on the battlefield, and he had wished they could be comrades one day. The man felt bad, as they had went after his son, but he was not the one in charge. But this was the way his brother showed. His appreciation for Minato's actions. Was this really for the good of Kumu? While B was complimenting this in his mind, he heard the to be grumbling contempt, flanking by his brother and the young blonde of Ejinjulike, two tails. The Raikage was the happiest man in the world. Not only did he accomplish his old man goal by capturing the Uzumaki, but he also have a Hayuga, the Kayube, and the son of Minato Namikaze. Why Minato name his son after a fish cake? He didn't really care, but screw it. That wasn't important right now. H. I want the girl into the slave and breeding program, the Raikage said. Yuji told Flint up on hearing the program. As a woman, a period of the shadows as she dropped to one knee. Yes. As he looked towards her, let me remind you, if the girl in my slave and breeding program is harmed, again, I will have you fired. Do I make myself clear? This program was also used for an incentive for his elite shinobis, and he had to keep their morale high. H gulp, she was certain that the word of firing was literal and not figurative, as she took the sleeping girl and left the room. B. You take Minato's boy to the ceiling room. To immediately suppress his memory, we begin training him tomorrow. I will give him a new identity. Once he become a fully fledged ninja, we can start to take more aggressive actions. A smiled deviously. An extra seal would be too risky for Jinjulke. And also the A Tetrigam seal was something beyond his seal masters here. It was not a normal seal after all. But he could not seal the boy identity completely. So he had to keep his first name. But he can change his surname though. The name Namikaze would raise too much attention. The head ninja was standing there rather proudly. Until his throat was gripped, you fool. From the reports, you got caught by the head Hayuga. And I told you to use an art due to the frame, the hidden stone. Not a lightning one and no doubt Kanoha would suspect you. You are the head ninja and you disappoint me so gravely. Now, I have to clean up your mess. But, but, he struggled to speak. But the man snapped his neck and threw his body away. I don't keep a loose end, Yuchito. Remove this fool. Time skip. A smiled to himself as he thought about all the bloodline enemy that they had captured over the years. As he was thinking of which of the women to impregnate. As he looked towards the chart of all the bloodline myths to make sure that they came out fully with something even more powerful. There was a literal section where there were slave conuiches that were pumped with drugs. To make sure that it was the best environment for a child. The man was yes decrepit that much for bloodline. Some drugs that will increase the chance of them getting pregnant at a younger age. 
so that his village would be swarmed with bloodline in a few years. The ninja world was definitely not a good place and this man was the prime example of that. The lengths that he would go, the things that he would not do to make his village stronger. Beyond corrupted and evil. After he finished the report he start to smile to himself as he looked towards a particular wall in the room. He had a dream, no he had an ambition that he would make into a reality. It was of the hidden cloud crushing all competitions. And that would definitely become a reality when Kumo unlocked the secrets of his arch enemy technique that he used to dominate the battlefield. The wall had a display of three prom kunais in a case, a lot of them. The flying thunder god technique, time skip, four years later. While doing housework and waiting for her family to return home, Mikoto Uchiha wonder if Naruto and Hinata were safe. Since the boy went missing and Kanoha was critically vulnerable, Without a Jinjulke, she had been pulled from the reserves. However, she got horribly wounded on a mission. Now she could only do simple chores around the compound, but that was enough for her family and her clan. The Namikaze slash Hayuga incident added fuel to the fire to the Uchiha clan. People blamed them for their police force being incompetent to stop the abduction of the children. She greatly appreciated Hayashi and Hitomi voting for them, but the tension was still higher than ever. It will only be a matter of time before too much tension until it explodes. As she truly and truly wished that there was a way to make matters worse. Her husband and her son Itachi has been acting rather strange lately. Boom! The place shook as a massive explosion went off that almost obliterated the Uchiha headquarters, followed by several other explosions. Moments later, Sasuke Uchiha froze, dropping his school bag as he ran. He saw bodies, and one of them was none other than his father, right at the police headquarters. He saw someone standing there holding a ninjato in his hand. It was his brother Itachi Uchiha, covered in blood, reeking of death and killer intent. Sasuke was petrified in fear. What? What? Why? Why, he said. He couldn't understand his mouth, unable to form the word properly. Sasuke was grabbed roughly as he was picked off the ground. This is to test my capacity. Foolish little brother, he said. Let me show you how I slay those people. His brother eye morphed into something else. Sukuyomi. An hour later. Why would Itachi do this? The dog mass on who said cannot understand exactly how and why Itachi would commence this atrocious act. Enough talking, go and find other survivors, here and said. Well, it seems this settled everything. Donzo Shamiro said as he walked up. Harrison's face showed one of pure anger as he looked towards a man. What exactly does this settle? Don't you see the huge problem that this caused? Consider it rent of the minor. At least the Uchiha clan will recover in a decade or two. Danzo said disinterested, as there was no sympathy in his tone. Thankfully, Fukaku only conspired this with the battle able Uchiha's, and not the rest of his clan. Had we not lost our weapon, we should wipe the entire clan out. Here's in wonder this weapon, was he talking about Naruto? And why about the entire clan? He was surely a monster. Danzo, I can't believe you. You. Someone in your position had this genocidal idea in your mind. Where is your will of fire? But you see, Harrison, I did it what? For the good of Kanoha? What you had done had weakened the village further. There might have been a way to prevent a coup and prevent this bloodshed. This purge, and not to mention your suggestion on genocide, is rather horrifying. Tell me, if Naruto was still in Kanoha, would you have killed all of them, the children, the old people? Innocence, would you have killed all of the Uchiha clan? Answer me! Looking in Danzo's eyes was all that Hiruzen needed to confirm it. Hiruzen clenched his fist in rage. You might have prevented a coup, but still, what you have done? Your rule program is disbanded, and you are no longer the second commander. Now leave my sight. Danzo turned as he walked away. Truly a monster, here's in thought. 
Thank Kami I did not tell him about the secret talks with Taki. Otherwise, he would have wiped out the entire clan. A few days later, the word spread about the psychopathic Uchiha that wiped out a large portion of his clan. The dislike for the Uchiha's turn a uh, quick 180. Now there was nothing but sympathy. Lying in her hostel bed, Mikato couldn't help but sob. As the third told her the s rank secret, her husband was plotting a coup, along with the elder members of the clan, and Itachi was ordered to wipe them out. To make things worse, her eldest son was declared missing name, an s rank criminal. There was a bounty on him, dead or alive. The woman felt great pain at that moment that shook her to her very core. That pain brought forward something as her eyes changed. Her Sharingan switched into four pedals. She was shocked. The Mangetio Sharingan. She was one of the few people that awakened his eyes. All the pain was just that great. But there was still someone that she had. She glanced towards her youngest son Sasuke sleeping peacefully. With the wound that she had received she could not fight. She could not go on the battlefield for a couple of years. But she would use these eyes. And she would protect her son. No matter what. And she knew somewhere out there as well. The son of Minato and Kushina, Naruto, was out there and she would protect him as well. They will find him. And Hinata as well. Time skip. Thump. The body of Yomi dropped on the ground. As he dropped dead. Jumping down towards the ground, someone stood there. He had blonde hair. With icy blue eyes. He was wearing a standard. Kumo. Chunin flap jacket. Three more cloud ninjas appear after they took out their respective targets. The blonde walked over and picked up a stroll from the body of Yomi. He then threw it towards his team leader. Excellent. The right Kage will be very pleased with this, Naruto. The team leader said after he read the stroll content. Team G was part of the Jutsu. Acquisition Task Force formed by the Raikage to strengthen the Kumo in almost every area, including Medical Ninjutsu. The team just hunt down a wanted medical name and they took his valuable jutsus and techniques. Who is next on the list, J? G asks. Shino. Another medical ninja. He was spotted at Land of Hot Water, not far from here. The Chunin says he read the list. Good. Let's go, said G. One month later, Lightning Country. After their months long mission to hunt down the targets and acquire their jutsu, Team G was finally returning home. They passed by a bookshop where many people were lined up for a new series of a book called the Ichi Ichi Paradise. As Naruto noticed a man walking away giggling, holding said book. The author of that book, the name inside was Shiraya. Naruto gripped his head. Naruto, are you okay to lead your axe? Yes, I'm fine. It's just the porn that disgusts me. As he pointed towards a large billboard that was promoting the pornographic book. Jiraiya. Jiraiya of the Sonin. He's a legendary son and of course everyone knows him but why? Why do I? The last headache he got was when the academy taught him about the Sonins. But this one was much stronger. G looked at him. What? You think that book is porn? Well, you can see. The adult restriction over the cover. No. It's a masterpiece. People as young as you don't probably appreciate it yet. Actually, I pre-ordered a copy, and it should arrive by mail. As Naruto and his teammates sweat drop, don't let my wife and the Raikage know it, okay? Sure, they said. Time skip. Raikage's office. The A-B combo was in Raikage's office, and they were having a discussion. B. How many more years before he can go to the Turtle Island? Since he became a fully-fledged ninja before he turned 5, Kumo started to take aggressive actions. He was pleased and impressed. As Naruto was improving greatly, the boy earned his chunin rank within a year after his graduation, before he became 6 years old. He was truly the son of the Yellow Flash and the Red Death. B was in deep thought, as it took him a while to answer. At least 2 more years. The Kayubi was extremely hard to control and I doubt he could achieve that kind of control at this time. Alright, 2 more years. I'll increase his training load and his mission to make him as strong as possible said A. Two more years to get the Kayubi under control and put Kumo as the number one dominating supreme power of the elemental nation. Time skip two years later.
Kumo Sleep and Breathing Program Facility. The facility area was restricted to females only. The others had to stand out behind the hall. The hall served to be some kind of slave picking program by the Rakage to put Kumo on the market to further increase his village drive and his power. It was a 10 year plan. In the hall, a 9 year old, Tiri Aikinata helped us to watch. One of her friends, Riku, graduated as a 13 year old girl was taken away. Hinata knew well what would happen to Riku once she was taken to her new master's home. She just hoped her friend would not suffer. The facility was not only a residence and prison for slaves, but a training school for them as well. There was even an indoor sports ground and swimming pool where they were meant to do exercises each day to physically improve their body. Hinata toddler memory was very fuzzy. The only recent memory she had was of when she was 7 years old when she came here. As a part of this program, she was issued an oversized racket shirt, nothing else. They taught them how to serve their masters and, not to mention for the beneficial of Kumo as well, to bring forth a new generation that was elite, stronger, and not to mention things that they were forced to go through and watch. They were not touched by any of the people here but they were forced to watch intimate act to make them know what would be coming once they were taken after they reached the age. They were told that it was their job to please their masters, no matter what they wanted. When the students argued that this was all too dark and obscene, they were slapped across the face by H, and they were also punished as well, whips. They were hit. It was a lesson and a reminder for them not to skip out of line once again. Hinata has gotten whipped over the course of her years of being here, as she didn't want to do any of this, but after so long she started to lose confidence and slowly accepted that this was her life as she would not break free. It was programmed in their mind. They had to be her children for Kumu to make the village strong and listen to their masters. They were just that, slaves. As she watched her friend Riku disappear in her view, she knew it was a matter of time before Elite Ninja would come here and claim her as his property. She could just only hope that he was at least decent. Meanwhile, the Valley of the Clouds and Lightning Good, you can finally stop the chalker on my sword with the wind release on your blade. Be congratulated Naruto on his advance. King Jutsan is win a finte. Naruto was panting as he smiled. He's been doing many missions and training rather rigorously over the past 6 years. He became a chunin before turning 6 and he was the youngest member in the elite golden force. He served the group for 2 years until he was transported to be under the guard of Killer B. He was to become his apprentice. Clapping could be heard as he arrived. Well done, he said. How about you get some rest while I have a talk with B? As Naruto nodded his head. You think he's ready now? asked A. As he was growing impatiently to have the Kyubi's power, he couldn't wait to have a third perfect Jinjulke on his hand. B was in deep thought. Naruto should be able to pass the waterfall test now. But I still have some doubt when he faced Akiyubi. The Nine feels a lot more stronger but he should be alright with Haxabi and my help. He then turned to face his brother, yes, he's ready. Three minutes later Naruto returned after washing his face by nearby river. B looked towards his Jinjoki apprentice. Naruto, we will begin the next stage of your training. We are going to go to the Turtle Island. Pack up your stuff and meet me at the gate in two hours. Naruto bowed his head as he left. Since Kumu abducted Naruto and the Haiga girl. The right target began his 10 year plan. B did not like the way things was going. But his brother was obsessed. But as B looked towards Naruto he was becoming like a bro to him. Sometime he wished that Naruto could call him bro rather than sensei. Hopefully after they returned from the turtle island. As A was smiling. Soon. Kumo will have an army of. Offsprings that come from Naruto that. Will be immensely more powerful. As they travel on. And the army would just keep on growing. The boy just always seemed to amaze him. The boy offsprings will do the same as well. One month ago Kumo had learned to shed a clone. After Kanoha Jonin was captured. As Naruto turned to create 100 clones. Shocking everyone. The 9 year old was just really something else. The true hybrid power of Naruto Namikaze. And the Uzumaki mix. 
Just imagine how much he could make when he accessed the Kyubi's power. I'll get Samui, Karu, and Amoy to come with you too, to the Turtle Island as well. It is time to get the Kayubi under control. The Raikagi was happily thinking to himself. However, what he was doing was going to turn out to be the biggest mistake of his life. He would not know it now, but he is messing with people's fate. He had already abducted them as a young child, seal away Naruto's members and Hinata as well, putting her in that disgusting program and also used Naruto like a pawn. However, soon enough, well, you will just have to stick around and see guys, but this episode come to an end right here. I really hope that you guys enjoy this one and I'll be post part 2 as soon as possible. So just kick up your foot, sit back and relax guys. And I really hope you guys enjoy. And remember to stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way. I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them, but I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.